Okay, so next let's talk about the Prime Directives of the Unconscious Mind on page 59. Now this is not traditional NLP. It comes from Tad James when he modeled the kahunas of Hawaii. And I think it's important to understand what the unconscious mind does and how it affects the body. You see, the conscious mind is like the captain of a ship, where the unconscious mind is like the crew and the ship. The unconscious mind, like the crew of the ship, perform every function needed to keep the ship sailing. The job of the conscious mind is to set the ship's course and to give it direction. Previously, you know, the Freudian view of the unconscious mind was it was thought to be a dark holding pen of repressed negative emotions, sexual urges and selfish impulses. I think it's more useful to think of the unconscious mind as a storehouse of infinite resources for good as well as a repository for all of our feelings, our habits and our beliefs. Of course, remember that the conscious and the unconscious mind are actually just metaphors for the functioning performed by our body and mind as a whole. And that the mind itself is not really a thing, but more of a process. You see, the brain is the meat. The brain is the actual unit, whereas the mind is the process, is the software. So let's talk about the prime directives. The first one we got there is the unconscious mind stores our memories, both temporally and atemporally. So in relationship to time and not relationship to time. So with timeline therapy as an example, we can find out when somebody created a limiting belief or where, and so that would be temporal, where atemporally is not relationship to time. And so things like values and language, we don't really know necessarily a specific time and date that we've learned that particular value or that language. Number two, the unconscious mind is the domain of your emotions. Now, of course, you feel your emotions consciously, but they get stored unconsciously. And the unconscious mind also organizes all of your memories and it uses the mechanics of a gestalt. And so this is how it stores these emotions and memories with gestalts. The unconscious mind represses memories with unresolved negative emotions. You see, it's like the unconscious mind takes the negative emotions and it's like it puts it in a black bag somewhere in the body for storage so that you can keep on functioning and not feel those emotions continuously. You see, you may not just have the resources yet to deal with the emotion at that time. The problem comes when we repress those emotions and, and eventually creates disease. Think about at home, you know, once a week, you take all your rubbish, you put it in the bin bag, and then the bin men come and they take the black bag away. What would happen if nobody came to take those black bags away and the rubbish just piled up and piled up and piled up? Eventually, of course, you start getting rats and disease, etc. And so the unconscious mind takes these repressed memories with unresolved negative emotions and it takes them and puts them in those black bags and it's stored somewhere. Now, we don't know where, but somewhere in the neurology. And of course, we need to be able to deal with those things because if we keep on stacking it up, eventually it can cause disease. So the unconscious mind then comes and it presents these repressed memories for resolution, you know, to make them rational or to release the emotions. Have you ever had a memory that, that bothered you? And then you resolved it and it's as if that memory kind of just didn't bother you anymore. Yeah, it happens. And so we get resources every now and then the unconscious mind will represent this. You know, you're driving along the road, just minding your own business. And all of a sudden the unconscious mind throws up this old memory with some things that you needed to resolve. And then you resolve it and you move on. However, the unconscious mind may keep some of these repressed emotions repressed for protection. The problem here yeah, becomes when people become detached from their emotions. You know, there was the old saying where they used to say to the boys, cowboys don't cry or men don't show their emotions. And so people become so good at saying, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel that. 
that they start repressing those emotions and they become detached from their emotions. You've heard it said somebody is just detached from their emotion. So sometimes you might first need to let go of the limiting decision that, hey, listen, it's actually okay to feel those emotions before you get to help the client with dealing with those negative emotions. In fact, in the Master Practitioner Training, we teach you a technique for long-term pain. And that actually starts with teaching the, strat the client a new strategy for becoming aware of and feeling and dealing with the negative emotions. Then number seven, the unconscious mind runs the body and has a blueprint of the body now and of perfect health in a place called the higher self. Now, depending on who you speak to, you might not want to say higher self. And, you know, I might just say the most unconscious part of you. And so the unconscious mind runs the body. In fact, if you put one asterisk next to number seven, you'll notice that one, three, four, five, seven and eight are circled. And those are probably the most important prime directors of the unconscious mind. With number seven, if you put an asterisk to it, and number eight, if you put two asterisks next to number eight, eight being the most important, and seven the next most important. So if the unconscious mind runs the body, we can actually ask the unconscious mind to help create healing and health. In fact, when we do pendulum work, that's where we communicate with the unconscious mind through a pendulum, and we can actually ask the unconscious mind to do this. So number eight, the unconscious mind preserves the body. And it maintains the integrity of the body. So the unconscious mind will do what it thinks it needs to, to preserve the body. However, it can get it wrong. See, the unconscious mind can make mistakes. And unfortunately, it can create disease with all this negative self-talk and the wrong instructions that it gets from the conscious mind. Remember those 90,000 thoughts that we have a day? And if we were focusing on the wrong things, the sum total of all that negative thinking, the sum total of all this moving away from, has a negative impact on the body. And as Patanjali wrote in the Yoga Sutras in 600 AD, he said, where there is negative thinking, let there be reflection to the contrary. So, if I get a negative thought, then I go and I switch that thought and I think to the positive and I want to think to the positive over and over and over and over and over until that negative thought is just blocked out till it is let go of so it's important for us to focus on what we want number nine the unconscious mind's a highly moral being so it accepts the morality that it's been taught and that it's accepted you know, that morality is not necessarily the same morality that everybody else accepts. However, it's the morality that that person has accepted. So you've heard the saying, there's honor amongst thieves. So we all have our own morality. Number 10, the unconscious mind enjoys serving and it needs clear orders to follow. The unconscious mind wants to do what you ask of it. If you don't give it any instructions, then it takes instructions and orders from other people. You see, it also likes to take instructions and suggestions from people that it respects, like doctors, advertising, uh, parents, teachers. And so this can be unfortunate in some cases where you see an advert and it says flu season is here. Well, of course, it's on the TV. It must be true. And what does the person do? They create themselves some flu. Or the doctor says you know what, your granny had diabetes and your mom had diabetes, so you will get diabetes. And so what does the person do? They go and create themselves some diabetes. And we've got to be very, very careful what we say, and especially to children. We'll talk about this later, about as the conscious and when the unconscious mind starts to develop and we start forming a critical faculty. But certainly as children, and even still as adults, we get programmed. And the unconscious mind accepts these instructions and these orders from external people and external events. And we've got to be very careful of what we actually allow in. See, unfortunately, 
very often we go through life on autopilot. The conscious mind can look ahead to the future, to consequences, it can plan, make up rationalizations, but it's the unconscious mind that acts in the moment. And so most of the time, your unconscious mind is actually in charge. Number 11, the unconscious mind makes associations. It links similar things and ideas and it likes to learn quickly. So the unconscious mind likes to learn quickly. And, you know, one of the examples when we do a swish pattern, we go swish and it's nice and quick. And the unconscious mind, it likes to learn quickly. We'll see this actually as we do a number of the different techniques. We also said earlier when we said all learning behavior and change is unconscious and we said how this change can happen as it, if it connects with the unconscious mind actually it can happen very quickly the unconscious mind likes to make these associations and link similar things together have you ever seen people on TV and maybe they remember a whole long list of names and numbers and they do this because they are linking those names and numbers to something else Number 12, the unconscious mind generates, stores, distributes, and transmits energy. So you can actually increase your energy. I love this. Uh, whenever I get tired, especially if I'm doing, you know, loads of trainings in a month, then I'll go inside and I actually have my unconscious mind turn up my energy. And people often ask, how is it that you can look so full of energy when you've been training so long? And of course, the unconscious mind can allow you to do that. One thing to bear in mind, of course, yeah, is you want to stay ecological. So if you're doing this for a client, you don't want to have energy 24 hours a day. Certainly not full energy, because there comes a time when it's bedtime, when the client should be able to wind down and go to sleep peacefully. Next, the unconscious mind maintains instincts and generates habits. So instincts are things like fight, flight, or flee. Whereas habits typically take time to install and sometimes it, it needs repetition to be able to install a new habit. However, we know that with NLP and hypnosis and so forth, actually, we can change a habit very, very quickly. So we can change a habit quickly and the unconscious mind likes to learn quickly, but there are times where it does need repetition. And so this example here would be that focusing so as Patanjali said where there's negative thinking let there be reflection to the contrary so if somebody thinks negatively that they need to over and over and over and replace that negative thinking consistently with a positive thought until that becomes the new way the stubbornly focus on what you want the unconscious mind is programmed to continually seek more and more there's always more to discover. There's always more to be had. In fact, the bad side to this is it's also the basis of substance abuse. You know, somebody tries one drug and then they want to do something stronger and then something stronger and then something stronger. Or they have a drink and then they want the next one and the next one and the next one. So that could be the, the bad side to it. Then, of course, have you ever thought if I have that car or that boyfriend or that girlfriend, or I make that amount of money, then I'll be happy. And then what happens six months after you get it? You want the new car, the new job, you want more money. So the unconscious mind is programmed to continually seek more and more. And there's no problem with wanting to do more. There's no problem with wanting to be more and create more success. As long as it is ecological. Number 16, the unconscious mind functions best as a whole integrated unit. Now we said that when we looked at the presuppositions of NLP. So we don't need parts to function. We want to do parts integration. We want to get rid of the parts and function as a whole. The unconscious mind is symbolic and it uses and responds to symbols. And each person will have their own symbols. Look at dreams as an example. We don't do dream interpretation. People ask, oh, what does that dream mean? Well, it's what does it mean to you? 
it's only true for the person who's dreamt it. And your unconscious mind uses symbols. In fact, Carl Jung called them archetypes. Think of a major event and how different people will recollect that event. So if there was a bank robbery and there were 10 people, then you get 11 different stories. 10 from the people and 1 from the CCTV cameras. If people have their own idea of what's happened. The unconscious mind is symbolic. The unconscious mind takes everything personally. And this is the basis of perceptions projection. I don't know if you've ever heard that saying when you point a finger that there's three fingers pointing back at you. And so when you say, oh, that person is bad, the unconscious mind takes it personally and thinks that you're talking about it. The unconscious mind works on the principle of least effort. We've said this a few times. So the path of least resistance. If I want more money and I find a tenor, unconscious mind thinks the job is done. So be very careful what you ask the unconscious mind to do. Be specific. That's why it's so important to know our outcome. And of course, the unconscious mind doesn't process negatives. So if I said, don't think of a blue tree, the first thing you probably think of is a blue tree, and then you go and change it to green or to yellow or something else. You see, you can't think about what not to think about without thinking about it. Whenever you talk to your client, tell them what they must do, you know, and ask them what they want to do, not the things they don't want to do. If you've got to tell somebody not to do something, then follow it up straight away with what you want them to do. Alternatively, like we did with the pattern interrupt, say stop and then give the instructions of what you want them to do. So those are the prime directors of the unconscious mind. And I think it's really important to consider what the unconscious mind does. You know, what the differences are. So the conscious mind is maybe aware of these seven plus or minus two things, where the unconscious mind is aware of everything. The conscious mind is very detailed, where the unconscious mind takes in the whole picture. The conscious mind does things sequentially, where the unconscious mind can do things simultaneously. The conscious mind is very logical, where the unconscious mind is intuitive. The conscious mind asks why, and the unconscious mind already knows why. The conscious mind is more waking, where the unconscious mind is more dreaming. The conscious mind does the voluntary movements, where the unconscious mind does the involuntary movements. The conscious mind is aware of now, where the unconscious mind, of course, is the storehouse of all of our memories. The conscious mind tries to understand the problems, where the unconscious mind already knows the solutions. The conscious mind thinks in words, and the unconscious mind thinks in images. The conscious mind is limited, where the unconscious mind is infinite. So what we really want to do is we want to get our conscious and unconscious to work together. We want to be integrated and get them to work together. And then it's so much easier to achieve our outcome. Because as we said, the conscious mind is the goal setter, where the unconscious mind is the goal getter. <laughs>